What would you say if I told you that Smash Ultimate is the best possible sequel that Nintendo could have made for the series? Some of you might agree with me, and some of you might feel that there's just something missing about the game. But I believe that the history of Smash and its evolution into an eSport has everything to do with why Ultimate is so great. To truly understand what makes Smash Ultimate such a fantastic sequel, we have to go back to 2001. The birth of Super Smash Bros. Melee. Our story begins at the start of the millennium with the original Smash sequel, Melee. The first Smash was a massive success because of how it combined Nintendo mascots with its unique take on fighting games. See, the series leader and creator Masahiro Sakurai wanted to make a fighting game that anybody could play, even if they were completely new. And with the immediate popularity of the first game, Nintendo tasked him to get working on a sequel. Melee was everything that Smash 64 was, but with more characters, more attacks, more ways to defend yourself, and way more movement options. The depth of its combo system and the degree of control that it grants you makes this game unlike any other. It was an incredible sequel and a critical and commercial success. And for better or for worse, it was the last Smash game to be uninfluenced by the fans. See, along with it being a better version of Smash 64 came an increased interest towards competition. Now, of course, tournaments did exist before 2001. In fact, Nintendo actually held their own official Smash tournament in the year 2000 as part of a show they called 64 Mario Stadium. But anyway, it was with Melee that people really started getting together and organizing tournaments. And as we know today, it turned out to be an extremely deep and competitive game. The engine is full of all sorts of high level options that can really set an experienced player apart from a casual. And oh man did this ever make for some great competitive gaming. Nice. Didn't sweet spot it, but yeah, wow. Ah, that it's, was it's so good. It, it's left it. Oh, no, let's go. No, no tech, let's, let's go. go. Hey, oh, yo, yo. Right. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. In the years after Melee was released, the community that formed around its players and tournament scene grew. And over time, Melee became recognized in the world of professional gaming. It even found its way into multiple EVO and Major League Gaming events. But despite all of this, there was a problem. Sakurai never intended for the game to be played competitively at all. He wanted Smash to be a casual experience that anybody could play. But if a casual player were to face off against a pro, well there's a chance that they would get so discouraged that they'd simply put down the game and move on. Because as melee players develop more advanced techniques and optimized punishes, the skill gap only continued to widen. And Sakurai hated this. It went completely against his intentions as the game's designer, and he grew to detest the idea of competitive Smash. From that mindset was born the first reactionary sequel in the franchise, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. <laughs> With Brawl, the Smash team did everything they could to prevent the game from being played the way competitive gamers were playing Melee. The ability to dash dance was removed. Air dodging was completely revamped to remove options like wave dashing and make escaping punishes much easier. And speaking of punishes, combos were pretty much non-existent in Brawl. Characters were floatier and knockback was increased, and just for the hell of it, Sakurai added in tripping. Yes, tripping. At any moment in time, your character might trip and leave you vulnerable. And it was completely random, so you could not plan for it. Wow. Literally, that game was won due to tripping. Yeah. To say the least, it was a major shock for most of the competitive Melee community, which is best exemplified by the existence of Project M, a mod that makes Brawl play more like Melee, and even has its own dedicated competitive community. But don't get me wrong, 
Brawl was no failure. It formed its own scene of players that truly enjoyed the game and even preferred its mechanics to the styles of the previous games. And with a competitive scene already existing around the previous titles, the foundation was set for these players to start running tournaments made for Brawl. But sadly, this led to a split in the community. This split that, you know, the people that like Melee, the people like, like Brawl. It was very common to see a lot of hate on Brawl back in the day, especially in 2008, 2009. You know, Brawl is not a good game, you know, things like, very offensive things that, you know, relentless. It was relentless harassing, pretty much. With most games, let's say take Street Fighter, for example. When a new title gets released in the series, the entire competitive community starts playing it. And that's what Nintendo was hoping would happen with Brawl. That the Melee players would all move on, and that Smash could go back to being a more casual series than it had been for the last six and a half years. But that's not what happened at all. Sure, in the first year or two, a bunch of Melee players tried to compete in Brawl. But the vast majority of them downright hated the game and it wasn't long before their attention was refocused back onto playing Melee. And that created a major rift in the competitive Smash community. The two games coexisted, but there was often bad blood between them. And it didn't help that the Melee players often had an air of superiority about them. Over time, Melee proved to be the more popular eSport, and Nintendo, as you might guess, was not too thrilled about this. Let's fast forward to 2013. After being absent for several years, Melee was invited back into EVO, which was a big deal for such an old game. And as a testament to the strength of the Melee community, it earned that spot by raising the most money for charity out of every other game trying to get in. And how do you think Nintendo and Sakurai reacted to all of this. They sent Evo a cease and desist letter to prevent the tournament from streaming Melee at all. It was a huge slap in the face to everyone that worked so hard to get the game on the main stage. And it sucked to know that Nintendo and Sakurai were still treating the community this way almost five years later. A community that only existed because of how much they loved their game. The decision was thankfully reversed, largely due to the efforts of player and commentator Prague. But it wasn't a good look for Nintendo and its relationship with competitive Smash. Meanwhile, Brawl was beginning to see its growth as an esport slow down, partially because of the dominance of few characters, changing formats like the one stock rule set, and the popularity of PM beginning to overshadow it. But worse than everything was that many Brawl players still felt like they were being treated as outsiders from the rest of the Smash community, which was probably the worst unintended consequence of Nintendo making such a difference. Smash game. With Melee, they created a game that essentially gave birth to Smash as an eSport. And despite their differences, Melee and Brawl players were at the very least united in their passion for playing Smash games competitively. It was clear that Nintendo needed to rethink their approach to the whole situation. It was time for Nintendo to make a change. Years of Nintendo refusing to recognize the community finally came to a close when the company held their own official Smash tournament at E3 2014. Even though it wasn't about Melee, it was a big first for the Smash community as a whole. This was Nintendo's way of saying that Smash 4 was going to be embracing its competitive side. Sure, the rule sets at the tournament were pretty freaking whack. But that's not what matters. The important thing was that for the first time in forever, Nintendo was actually working with the Smash community for a better future. Smash 4 was a big step in the right direction. Combos were back, characters moved faster. From a spectator's point of view, it was much more fun to watch than Brawl ever was. And in general, it had a lot going for it. The players that flourished in Brawl went on to become the top players of Smash Wii U, and with the support of Nintendo, its community grew to match Melee's. Both Melee and Smash Wii U had become recognized esports, and their respective top players became e-celebrities. But 
Even still, it did very little in the way of getting Melee and 64 players to take it seriously. And that's not because they're being stuck up. It's because comparatively, Smash 4 lacks the deep punish game and sense of control that makes those games so appealing. And with the game still not doing much for those players, the rift between communities continued to exist. Only now with Smash being much more of an eSport, everybody was a little bit more inclusive. But while those were only small steps for the Smash community, Nintendo was continuing to make positive decisions. They began to officially sponsor Smash tournaments, and player interviews were even making appearances on the Disney Channel. There was an actual dialogue between Nintendo representatives and the Smash community that never previously existed. They were watching, and they were learning. And in 2018, they were finally ready to make the most important Smash game in nearly 20 years. The best possible sequel that they could have made for their series, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We're not doing that! The release of Ultimate will forever be a historic moment in Smash. When Brawl came out, the Melee and 64 communities didn't follow. When Smash 4 came out, they once again refused to budge. But with Ultimate, for the first time in over a decade, the entire Smash community and all of its little subdivisions came together to play this new game. And they liked it. Nintendo made all the right changes to make Smash Ultimate appealing to everybody. From the perspective of a casual player, you have a great Smash game with tons of characters and stages to keep you entertained for years to come. From the perspective of a Smash 4 player, you have what feels like an organic evolution of what made the previous game so great. And from the perspective of a Melee or 64 player, you have the return of dash dancing, much more complex combos and punishes, and a game that feels like it's actually trying to appeal to you. The truth is, Nintendo made Ultimate the way they did because they wanted their newest Smash game to be the big popular esport instead of Melee, which is an old game for an old console. That's why they made a game that mechanically appeals to everyone. But in doing so, they helped heal the divide that has plagued the Smash community for so many years. Even if Melee players don't make the switch, the respect is now there. And that's something that I can say with confidence, because I am that Melee player who refused to adopt the other titles. I spent years grinding tournaments and trying to improve because I loved the game. And while I never really managed to reach that top level of play, I met so many others from the community who were just like me, who loved Melee or 64 but could never really get into the later games from the series. And yet, all of us, without fail, have found something to genuinely enjoy about Smash Ultimate. Even if we choose not to compete in it, we are still able to respect it. Few Roy's that actually uses Sour Spot up here to get conversions. And you saw that fourth throw. You wanted to set up for a, a knockdown right there, a tech chase. With Smash Ultimate, Nintendo made a game that everybody could enjoy. A game that closed the community divide for the first time ever, and a game that simply could not exist without the history of its predecessors. That's what makes it the best possible sequel that Nintendo could have made. It had the power to bring everybody together when they needed it most. The truth is, no one part of the Smash community is any better than the others. Whether it's the casual players, the 64 players, Melee, Brawl, or Smash 4, they all make up an equally important part of what Smash is today. An incredible series with fans that truly love their game. Oh, and f*** Salem.